A shallow, violent tremor rattles Naples. A fresh magnitude 3.3 quake at Campi Flegre, the supervolcano with centuries of unrest buried beneath the city's streets. But this was not a one-off. It is the latest in a relentless six-week swarm of increasingly strong earthquakes. Why are the shocks ramping up? And does this mark the countdown to something far worse? At 4.18 a.m. on November 26, 2025, the ground beneath the western edge of Naples jolted with a force that sent people leaping from their beds. Phones lit up as the INGV seismic network confirmed what thousands already knew. A magnitude 3.3 earthquake had struck Campi Flegre, shallow and sharp, with its epicenter in the restless Solfatara sector. In the silence that followed, car alarms wailed and windows rattled across Pozzuoli. Some residents rushed into the street, hearts pounding, clutching children and pets. Others froze, waiting for the next shock. The tremor lasted only seconds, but the sense of unease lingered long after. Seismograms from the right station captured a jagged spike, a signature of abrupt, near-surface rupture. Local authorities logged dozens of calls reporting cracks in walls and fallen objects. Social media filled with images of plaster dust and swinging lamps. The quake's shallow depth, barely two kilometers beneath the surface, amplified its impact. For many, this was the strongest shaking felt in years, a physical reminder that the volcano below is not sleeping. By sunrise, the question on everyone's mind was simple. Is this the beginning of something bigger? The data from this single event, combined with the visible shock in the community, suggest a system under stress. With each new tremor, the line between ordinary life and volcanic crisis grows thinner. Campi Flegre hasn't given Naples a break. Instead of isolated bursts, the seismic network logs reveal a near-continuous swarm stretching back at least six weeks. Day after day, the quake lists fill with new entries, sometimes a handful, sometimes dozens, and sometimes more than 100 in a single week. The magnitude numbers are climbing too. Where magnitude 1 and magnitude 2 once dominated, now the proportion of magnitude 3 and above is steadily rising. This is not a random scatter of tremors. Time series plots show a persistent background hum, punctuated by sharper spikes, but never returning to true quiet. Scientists reviewing the data see a pattern that does not fit the official language of separate swarms. The swarm has not ended, it has simply evolved. In February, the network detected over 600 earthquakes in a single week. The largest was magnitude 3.2. Since then, the Solfatara sector has remained the epicenter of unrest, with new quakes clustering in the same shallow zone. The intervals between events have shrunk, and the energy released in each episode is trending upward. This ongoing crisis is not just a matter of numbers. The continuity of seismicity, coupled with the growing share of stronger quakes, points to a system under sustained stress. The ground is shifting, the pressure is not letting up, and the caldera is signaling that the unrest is anything but routine. For researchers, the question is no longer whether the swarm will stop. It is what mechanism is driving it to persist and what might finally break the pattern. Beneath the surface of Solfatara, a new threat has taken shape. A vertical fault stretches more than one kilometer from just below the crater floor down to nearly two and a half kilometers deep. This structure, mapped in detail by seismic tomography and dense arrays of sensors, did not exist in its present form before 2019. Its growth has been tracked in real time by teams using AI-enhanced earthquake catalogs, revealing thousands of microquakes lining up along an increasingly well-defined plain. The fault cuts through altered volcanic tuff and ancient lake bed sediments, slicing the cap rock that once limited the movement of fluids and gases as ground inflation pushes upward and hydrothermal pressure builds. The fault acts as a weak seam. Each burst of seismicity, each slip episode, is another sign that the crust is failing along this pathway. High resolution. INSAR maps show ground. Uplift peaking directly above the fault, while relocated earthquake hypocenters trace its path from Solfatara toward Pisciarelli. The slip zone itself is not just a line, it is a fractured corridor made more permeable by the constant stress and by the repeated passage of hot, corrosive fluids. 
laboratory tests on rock samples from boreholes in the area confirm that the material along the fault is now far more porous and less able to seal against rising pressure. In the past, the caprock kept the system in check. Now the fault offers a direct route for steam, gas, or even magma to reach the surface. For the scientists watching these developments, the alignment of recent earthquakes along this structure is more than a curiosity. It is a warning that the volcano's internal plumbing is changing, and not in a way that favors stability. Official Monitoring Stations Recorded 110 earthquakes at Campi Flegre between November 17th and November 23rd, 2025. That number stands out even against the backdrop of recent unrest. The weekly bulletin from INGV, Italy's National Geophysics Institute, lists these events in stark columns, date, time, magnitude, depth. Most were shallow, clustered near the surface, and many struck within the Solfatara sector, echoing the pattern of the main swarm. This is not a brief pulse or a single outlier. It is a sustained drumbeat of seismicity, week after week. Alongside the quake counts, ground deformation data continues to raise alarms. GNSS stations, especially the right site near Pozzuoli, show the caldera floor rising at an average of 2.5 centimeters per month. This rate has held steady for much of the past year, with no sign of slowing. In total, the ground has lifted more than 21 centimeters since January 2024. Each increment is mapped in near real time and plotted on graphs that show a relentless upward trend. The uplift is not spread evenly across the region. It concentrates in a tight zone above the most active faults and degassing vents, matching the epicenters of the strongest quakes. For analysts at INGV, the numbers are more than statistics. High frequency seismicity, persistent ground inflation, and the tight spatial overlap of these signals point to a pressurized system, one where the crust is being forced open from below. The mechanism is measurable, the threat quantifiable. As the data accumulate, the crisis at Campi Flegre becomes less a matter of possibility and more a question of timing. Steam and gas vent endlessly from the Solfatara crater, but the numbers behind these emissions are what truly unsettle scientists. Instruments anchored beside the main fumaroles have logged a persistent temperature of 173 degrees Celsius, remarkably high, especially for late November. Heavy rains have drenched the caldera for weeks, yet the vent's heat has not dropped. Under normal conditions, rainwater seeps into the ground, cooling surface vents and dragging down thermometer readings. That has not happened here. Instead, the temperature holds steady, hinting at a powerful, sustained energy source below. Gas chemistry tells a parallel story. Sensors sampling the rising plumes detect carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and helium in increasing proportions. Time series plots show that carbon dioxide levels, once relatively stable, now trend upward, with occasional sharp spikes that coincide with uplift and seismic bursts. The ratio of carbon dioxide to sulfur dioxide, a key indicator of magmatic input, has climbed in recent months, while helium isotope measurements point to a growing magmatic signature. These are not the slow, seasonal changes seen in a dormant system. They are rapid, persistent, and in some cases unprecedented for this hydrothermal field. The combination of unyielding heat and rising volatile ratios suggests the shallow hydrothermal system is under mounting pressure. Each new gas surge, each stubbornly high temperature, supports the view that magmatic fluids are forcing their way upward, pressurizing the aquifer and straining the fractured crust above. For the monitoring teams, these signals are not just background noise, they are evidence of a system primed for sudden release. Centuries before seismic networks and warning sirens, Campi Flegre's power was carved into the landscape itself. In the autumn of 1538, the earth ruptured at the western edge of the caldera, spewing ash and fire for eight days. A new mountain, Monte Nuovo, rose from a flat meadow, swallowing farms and altering the coastline. Chroniclers describe darkness at noon, choking air, and a rain of pumice that drove people from their homes. This eruption, the last major outburst from Campi Flegre, stands as a benchmark, a reminder that the volcano beneath Naples is capable of sudden, transformative violence. The echoes of that event linger in local memory and in the science of today. 
In recent months, instruments have registered several earthquakes above magnitude 4, shallow and sharp, concentrated in the same restless sectors that once gave birth to Monte Nuovo. While the official catalog capped the strongest at magnitude 3.2, advanced seismic analysis hints at more powerful, undetected shocks. For the first time in centuries, the caldera is matching the energy levels of its historic past, not just in numbers, but in the intensity of ground movement. Ancient Greeks and Romans called this place the gateway to the underworld, a land where gods and monsters dwelled beneath burning fields. Now, with each new tremor, the mythic reputation of Campi Flegre feels less like legend and more like a warning written into the ground itself. In the early 1970s, Pozzuoli's oldest neighborhood, Riona Terra, emptied almost overnight. Military trucks rolled through narrow streets, collecting families as ground uplift and tremors forced authorities to act. Between 1970 and 1972, and again in 1983 and 1984, thousands were removed from their homes sometimes given only hours to pack. Schools closed, businesses shuttered, and whole blocks stood abandoned. The official reason was safety, but for those taken away, it felt like exile. Years passed before many could return, and some never did. The feared eruption never came. Instead, the city was left with scars, broken trust, disrupted lives, and a deep-rooted skepticism toward evacuation orders. Memories of empty houses and military checkpoints linger, shaping every new warning from officials. Many residents now hesitate when the word evacuate is raised, torn between fear of the volcano and fear of another false alarm. This collective trauma still shadows Pozzuoli, complicating decisions as seismic risk grows and the urban fabric becomes more fragile with time. Pozzuoli's population has soared since the 1970s, doubling from around 40,000 to nearly 80,000 residents today. The city's expansion has filled every available hillside and shoreline, often without regard for official zoning or seismic safety. After the Brady seismic crisis of the 1980s, thousands of new apartments, homes, and small businesses sprang up. Many built quickly, some without permits, and most never designed to withstand strong shaking or ashfall. The result is a patchwork of old stone houses, post-war apartment blocks, and unreinforced concrete buildings scattered across the caldera's most active ground. For city planners, this growth is a nightmare. Legal and illegal construction have outpaced the ability to regulate or retrofit, leaving entire neighborhoods vulnerable. Many homeowners avoid seismic upgrades because their buildings lack the paperwork needed for official approval. In the event of an eruption, these structures offer little defense. The idea that people could simply shelter in place is a dangerous illusion. When the hazard is superheated ash or collapsing roofs, the only real safety comes from getting out, fast. With so many people living atop fragile ground, evacuation is not just a precaution, it is the only realistic option. Over half a million people live inside Campi Flegre's official red zone. The yellow zone, which rings the caldera, holds another 800,000. On paper, these boundaries are lines on a map, but in reality, they carve through dense neighborhoods, packed apartment blocks, and narrow streets. Civil protection plans treat evacuation as the only real defense, because the physics of what could come leave no other option. Pyroclastic flows, blasts of gas, ash, and rock can surge from a vent at 30 to 60 miles per hour hotter than a blast furnace, reaching temperatures close to 800 degrees Celsius. These currents do not pause for traffic lights or bottlenecks. They move faster than most people can run, filling valleys and cutting off escape routes in minutes. There is no meaningful way to shelter from them. Concrete walls and steel doors offer almost no resistance. The only proven survival strategy is to not be there when the flow arrives. For emergency planners, the numbers are daunting. Moving 500,000 people out of the red zone would be a challenge even with weeks of warning. But the science of Campi Flegre's eruptions suggests time may be measured in hours, not days. The gap between population and hazard is stark. Every family that stays behind faces a threat that cannot be outrun or withstood. The only real variable left is how quickly authorities can act and whether the window to move such a mass of people will open at all. 
Civil Protection's evacuation plan hinges on a single figure, 72 hours. That is the official window to clear Campi Flegre's red zone before an eruption. But as the volcano's restlessness grows, the 72-hour rule looks less like a shield and more like a risk. The plan assumes warning signs, rising tremors, and swelling ground will give authorities three days to act. Yet Campi Flegre's history and recent models show that eruptions, especially phreatic blasts, can strike with little or no warning. The margin for error is razor thin. Drills in November 2025 revealed just how fragile the system is. Full-scale evacuations have never been attempted. Even partial drills exposed gridlock as buses, ambulances, and cars jammed narrow roads. Ferry and rail lines cannot handle the surge. Small exercises showed confusion over routes, bottlenecks at highway exits, and the daunting challenge of moving hundreds of thousands in real time. Emergency planners now concede that, under current conditions, a full evacuation could take far longer than the plan allows, especially if panic spreads with the first ashfall. The threat does not end on land. Much of Campi Flegre's caldera lies beneath the Bay of Naples. Scientists warn that a submarine eruption or sector collapse could push enough water to trigger a tsunami, sending waves toward the crowded coast. Monitoring buoys scan for anomalies, but no system can promise enough warning. The most catastrophic models predict an ash column rising 18 miles, grounding flights, and spreading fallout across southern Italy. Campi Flegre is officially classified as a national-level threat, its hazards stretching far beyond Naples. The gap between planning and reality leaves one question, will the next warning come in time? Right now, more than half a million people live atop an active supervolcano while seismic signals keep intensifying beneath their feet. Italy's official risk plans still count on days of warning. Phreatic eruptions can strike with almost no notice. The ground does not negotiate with human timelines. How we prepare or fail to prepare determines whether today's warning becomes tomorrow's catastrophe. Stay alert and let me know your thoughts in the comments.